I think many thanks uh, to you and uh, to the Academy in Kazakh uh, that we are able to do here. For me, it's an interesting memory because for the last 30 years I've been very often in this building. <clears throat> I was Minister for Science, uh, forget it. And uh, we started uh, with all the contacts uh, here with the Hungarians as neighbors uh, under the conditions of the Iron Curtain and so on and so on. So far, a lot of history is in, and there uh, was also in the comments here a lot of history. Allow me, I think we shall look to future. Not to forget history, because it is always said we have to learn out of history. It is a basic question for me, do we really learn out of history? I think we are so much employed to remember history that we are forgetting that we have to learn out of it. I think we are always looking back. It's quite interesting and it's very important also, not only for Europe, uh, because uh, if you say, I think uh, in Russia, I think the time of uh, the Tsarist Empire is coming up as a perspective. Uh, in Ankara, again, uh, the uh, empire of the Sultan is coming up. Uh, uh, by, Dear English friends are looking now to the carnivals of nations, uh, even under imperial auspices and so on and so on, which will not solve their problems. I think we have to turn around. It's, it's extremely important. Thank you very much for your all mentioning so much history. I will try to look to the future. Looking to Europe, what is our problem? I think we Europeans are already marginalized. We are 5% of the world population. We are still around 20% of the economic power, and we are consuming the wealth of this world at 50%. And here we are amidst the problems now existing. That's, for my feeling, the real chance of the ecological challenge, not only concerning wind and water and uh, climate and so on and so on, but to learn that we are responsible for the whole globe, which are, we are not really able to do. And I think the real problem of us Europeans, not only Central European, it's only a small part, is uh, what will be the position of Europe? I think, don't forget, Europe is not anymore very important. I think for the moment we have two, let, let's use the expression superpowers, uh, that's still the Americans and it is China. I think even Russia is not anymore really important. Don't tell it Vladimir Putin, but it is a reality. Uh, and other problems are coming up, uh, Africa and so on and so on. And I think in this direction we have to look. And we tried it, in the especially in the second part of the book, to line out what can be the learning process, what can be the possibilities to, to this, because Central Europe is all this differentiation is a neighborhood uh, to the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea, uh, is a neighborhood to Russia, is a neighborhood and, 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 I think, long story, and even I think we are learning by migration that what is happening in Syria and the near and Middle East has a great, great importance for us. I think we have not the knowledge, but we have not the capacity and we have not the strategy, I think, to deal with this. Uh, I think what will we do if the th uh, 3.5 million refugees based now in Turkey will come to Europe? I wish us all the best. I think, okay, again, we will have uh, some prime ministers like the Austrian one who will close the borders. But uh, I think if 3.5 million are around, uh, then the chance of closing borders will not be very good. In reality, it's really happening. If we are looking uh, to the population, I think uh, it's quite interesting. Vienna was an international city around 1900. We are becoming now again an international city because if I'm going to the streets, I can listen to a lot of languages. I think one of the languages which is not really spoken is Viennese German. Uh, because I think uh, migration is happening. Uh, and I think I'm not... Uh, criticizing this. Uh, on the other side, I think it might be a real chance. I'm extremely grateful to these comments, uh, including my friend Emil, concerning culture. I think what is a real mistake, and I'm a fan of the European Union, but the real mistake is culture is not the responsibility of the uh, European Union, also education. 
which I think is really strange. What brings us together and what connects us, for example, in this small place between Hungary and Austria is culture and connections, but it is in a broader sense because all the important persons in culture were going around in Europe. I think it's extremely difficult if you want to, to try to describe Gustav Mahler, was he an Austrian, was he a Czech, was he Hungarian? No, I think he was really European and maybe of global importance because he was also going to the United States uh, and so on and so on. And that's the reality. I think we have to do a reality check in these questions. And this we tried uh, uh, with this second book on Central Europe and many thanks for the remark of the two years uh, written on the world has changed in the, in the last two years. It is extremely different and difficult what is happening now. I think uh, Europe has to ask uh, itself which important has still Europe. We are the way to be marginalized uh, in reality. And I think we are not really, we are not doing the realization of our own situation. And so far, I think the example of Central Europe and how we are able to manage it and to be here to be together and to use all the different possibilities uh, might be a, a possible example of uh, solutions which are necessary under the global uh, aspects uh, here for sure existing. I think uh, I'm happy that you are mentioning history, but I was in charge for 10 years of the Center for Democracy and Reconciliation in Southeast Europe. Uh, it was based in Thessaloniki. We delivered an extremely good work. I think six volumes uh, on history, uh, confronting the different interpretation of history. Now, dear friends, it's closed because no money was available. <laughs> I think nobody is looking here. But everybody is always saying we have to learn out of history and what in schools and so on and so on. And it's not really happening. I think we need another style of discussion. Maybe, uh, I think, even more radical. Radical in the sense of radix, of the old Latin word, that we are going to the roots uh, here really existing. This we tried. I think. Uh, <coughs> Some discussions we have, even with the importance of the nation state and so on and so on, I think it is partly gone because we are living together. We are living together by migration, we are living together by all our technical possibilities uh, where we have, by the information society and so on and so on. And if the next uh, rough situation on climate is coming, and if the wind is going with 120 or 150 kilometers per hour, then we are learning that the wind is not looking to our borders. And the consequences, I think we have to fight in common, in incorporation. And I think to move in this direction is, therefore I'm convinced Central European is a learning place for this and giving some examples. My dear friends, a lot of things are gone. We are still believing on the axis between Paris and Berlin and so on and so on. I think, may I say in a certain way, and uh, here I'm praising Central Europe, for the moment uh, Central Europe is more stable than Germany and France, which is a very interesting thing because the descriptions uh, in the newspapers and by research and so on and so on, that it is uh, really an unstable re region. We have other unstable regions which are really more dangerous for our own future. And I think we wanted to do a contribution in this direction to discuss it full in favor of future. I think we have to use history for the future. That's the extreme challenge. Finish. Thank you.